In my last video, I did a very brief video discussion about the Nesmith Trio and how that's going to lead up to this video, which is all about his knife. So if you're thinking about getting a particular knife, style of knife, which there's lots of different styles, the Nesmic may be the one for you. Now there's a lot of contemporary modern renditions of the Nesmic knife that does not exactly line up with the historic one, which is fine because really the historic one was designed for a specific use that most camp crafters and outdoor adventurists really don't have a need for. So if you are thinking about a historic knife like me for my purposes, and I am, uh, or I do a lot of what this knife is designed for, then reaching out and finding someone to make a historic rendition of it may be a good idea for you. But if you are just a contemporary modern day camp crafter, then the more modern Nesmic knife, if you like that shape, it may be good for you. But really, there are better camp craft knives out there than this particular shape. So let's dive into it and I'll explain to you why this knife may not be the best one for you, unless you do what it was designed for. Now, just like in my last video, I explained having a pocket knife for all your basic cuts, especially your fine detail cuts, you should have one, you know, just carry it on you. All, uh, just, it's a good idea. Always carry a pocket knife. And having a hatchet of some sort, unless you really like your silky saw or your, uh, your pruning saw, then having a hatchet, I'm kind of bias towards it. But as far as Nesmic's knife goes, now, this thing looks cool. Like it's just, it screams awesome, right? Like nothing like rugged outdoorsiness. You, someone whips out this knife and you know they're mean in business. But right away you can tell what this knife is going to be really, really good at based off of its shape. Now what classifies a traditional or very basic Nesmic knife. The most endearing part of it is the belly. You can see how wide the belly is from the spine. And the spine is a very gradual going outward, right? And it has a fairly straight point coming from the back of the spine. Now, so what is this good for? Now, if you watched my Horace Capart video, of the knife and explaining the different shapes and what they're good for. I, I went to a very good detail about that. I'll put that at the very end of this video. But the weight and balance of a knife can either work for you or it can work against you. This is a five inch blade knife and it's got a deer stag handle on it. And uh, let's see where it shines on the cutting itself. I'm going to really quickly show you just here, and then I'm going to move the camera so you can see exactly how well it cuts. Because it cuts really well. It's, it's very easy, the weight of it works out. If you're just trying to make some shavings and curls, if you're just trying to skin something maybe, then that's what this is good for. But when we start using the different cuts, the balance is not quite there. You have to get really, really close, especially to the first inch, two inches of the knife to have the most control. If you try to use the middle or towards the tip, it just does not have the same type of control. Whereas my uh, my Kephart knife, it's a little bit more balanced all the way up in doing that type of cut. Now, many people in my previous video said that it was a, a ridiculous or most awkward way of making cuts and curls. But it's efficient. When you think about the shape of your knife and you practice using it, try to find the most efficient way of cutting because every single knife, I promise you, every single knife cuts a little bit different based off of, uh, of course, it's grind, of course, it's taper and it's shape and it's balance, it's weight, etc. So I'm still sticking to it. Even though people may make fun of me that it's ridiculous looking, it makes sense if you actually practice with it. So 
when I cut it, because it's a slicing knife, right? Whenever we use our knives, we want to make sure that we slice with it. If I go to the tip and I'm looking to get even curls, I have to angle my knife out just a little bit farther away from me. And it has to do with the center of the blade to the handle. And this handle is a curved handle, right? So it's going to be a little bit different. Maybe those of you who are watching this don't care about the detail of the knife. But when you go towards the beginning of the belly, roughly where this is on the knife itself, that point, if you kind of line up and start your cut at that point, it can make much more even cuts. There's a knot right there. Okay, but if I try to do just the tip, I don't have as much success with it. No matter how I try to angle it, I struggle with continuing the curl all the way down. If I get just behind the belly and this point of the blade, that seems to be the sweet spot for getting consistent cuts all the way down. I can get pretty nice size and even curls. Like I said, if I'm right behind here. Now, this can be really good for making cuts because of the placement. As you line your elbow up, and of course this table is actually a little bit too tall, but if you line your elbow up with what you're cutting and you're going back and forth or you use your hand, your palm of your hand, of course leaving your thumb up and then rocking it back and forth, you can make really good cuts that way and then use your thumb cut to try to be more precise with it. On the other hand, if I take the knife and I start down here instead of towards the tip and I actually cut it this way, it actually does better. Now, if you've liked this video so far, please do us a favor and click like. That way other people find it. You'll be helping them out, and uh, we really appreciate it. So, if I go tip to back, I can get fairly good slices. But the problem is, is it all of a sudden shifts just like that. So that isn't a very comfortable place with a knife. I don't like how it jumps because of the weight from here. It's fairly consistent. Here it's fairly consistent, but here it is not. So how can we alleviate that? Well, unlike the other knives, if I go from this point to the tip, it's actually a lot more consistent. See the curls and how controlled they are? If I go from tip to back, they fly off. It's very difficult to actually make a feather stick with this particular knife doing that same method. I can get some really good curls, but not really a feather stick. But if I go from the other side, it makes it a little bit easier. But even then, it's still very, very difficult. Unless I want just really, really fine curls. But 
trying to stay consistent with the shape and with the, uh, the grind on this particular knife, it's not easy at all. I can make curls all day for tender, but trying to make a feather stick is not an easy thing to do with this knife. So I think if I was Nesmic, instead of using this, your your belt knife, your bushcraft knife or whatever, to make feather sticks, I would actually probably use my pocket knife instead of this one. Now, what is this really good for? Well, I'm going to show you how good of a chopper it is and how good of maybe a skinner this would be. Now for your different cuts. For making a power cut, which is the you know, first two inches of your knife, pulling straight back, it does a great job. And of course, I'm using physics against me if I go to the tip, so it's not something you really want to do unless you want really, really fine points at the very end. But if you're trying to remove a lot of material, you go for that first two inches. Yeah, that works out pretty well. When you think about your smaller cuts, little detail, using just the tip can do a bull nose. Of course you could also bring it up here and you can use the thumb. But where does this knife really really shine? As you can see here the point where it tapers off and how it has that belly. This it's a perfectly designed hunting knife. This will do a large game animal rather easily because of its shape, because of its grind, because of its, uh, its weight balance. Where it's at, if I hold my finger, see, I don't know if it's going to... So the balance is right there on the pommel itself. So it's, it's a good knife uh, in regards to that. The maker of this knife did a really good job with that. So it's not going to wear you out quite as well. When you're doing the slicing, when you're doing the cutting, and a nice thing about this is you can kind of use this in that way as a scraper. You can use it with a pinch grip, thumb, your two fingers, and you can slice it like so. So if you're skinning, um, this makes a really good a uh, camp cooking knife because it can, you know, cut your vegetables rather easily because of its shape. You can slice all day with that. But in regards to a woodcraft knife, I don't believe this is a good woodcraft knife. It's a good hunting knife. It's a good uh, camp kitchen knife because of its shape and because of its grind. But overall, I don't think it does as well due to the shape of a woodcraft knife. When I compare it to uh, Kephart's knife here, I think this one makes a better campcraft knife, but it doesn't do as well with the slicing like this one does. And it all goes back to the grind. The grind of this one is very different than this one. The geometry is very different on this one compared to this one. The weight is very different on this one compared to this one. So if I had to choose the two for woodcraft, 
I'm going to stick with this one. This is my general overall use knife. If I'm going hunting, I haven't decided yet. So we'll have to see what deer season, if I get a deer, or maybe I can go uh, help someone butcher a pig, and we'll figure out which one of these would actually be better for that particular purpose. I suspect this one is going to do a better job, especially when you think about skinning, because of that perfectly bellied shape. This one, you could do it, but it's not going to be as well, I suspect, as this one. Which knife do you get? That's the ultimate question that you have to decide based off of what your needs are, where you live, and what you're going to use it. This one here, I think, is the ideal woodcraft knife. This one here, I might like if I'm a hunter or if I'm doing a lot of camp chores, but for actual woods use, I'm gonna stick with my horse Kephart knife. Having this one here is really neat, and I can imagine Nesmith got a lot of good use out of it with his hunting, but I'm sure he probably used his pocket knife for a lot of the finer tasks instead of trying to use this one. When you're trying to start a fire and you're trying to make feather sticks, which I don't know, I don't know if a lot of people really use feather sticks or not, but when it comes to making feather sticks, then using this one is a lot easier than this one. If you're just trying to make a lot of curls and a lot of tender, and this thing, can cut curls just as good as any other knife. It can get you your tender that you need. So I guess you got to figure that out as well. Um, it, and you got personality as well. What fits your personality? Some of you might be thinking like, oh, that's not a knife. This is a knife, right? Whereas others of you who are a little more practical may think something like this would suit you. And many others prefer a different style camp knife all together, which is perfectly fine. Uh, you need to figure that out yourself. I hope this video just helped you maybe consider some of the nuances and some of the finer points of the Nesbic knife so you can make an educated decision on if it really is going to fit your, your needs. Sure, it looks kind of cool, but is it really going to do what you want it to do as a camp crafter or bush crafter? I don't think this is a good camp craft bush craft knife. I think this is a lot better. So, take my opinion for what it's worth. If you have a particular style knife, leave me a comment below. I'd really appreciate it. Or reach out to me on Facebook, on uh, Mr. Diaries Musings Facebook page, and show me a picture of what you like to use. I'd love to see uh, your pictures as well. You know, let's, uh, let's get a conversation going. Now, if you'd like to see uh, my links of all the different things that I like to use and take out in the field, check my description below. Don't forget to check out my website. I also have a podcast on all the different podcasting networks. And I have a new monthly newsletter. So if you want to sign up for the monthly newsletter, which has close-up pictures and articles that are hopefully helpful to people, and of course with a historic twist, then check out that below in the description as well, and you can sign up for it. Just need an email. That's it. I send it out to you once a month towards the end of the month. If you'd like to check out my horse Kephart video about the nuances of blade geometry, check this one out here. If you want to see my inspirational videos, check this one out here. I hope you guys have a wonderful week. Give a kiss on your loved ones, and I'll see you guys next time. Take care.